Good morning, friends. It is my absolute prayer this morning that you can see me say hello to you. Ah, oh, yay, it's working. So I wanna give a shout out this morning on this beautiful day, uh, June 28th. To all of you, welcome to worship. Welcome to the Manitowoc Cooperative Ministry Live Worship Service. We, I'm Pastor Judine Derwachter, co-pastor with the MCM. And we are a combination of two congregations in Manitowoc, Peace United Church of Christ and First Presbyterian USA. And my co-pastor, Matt Sauer, is um, joining us in spirit today, and I have a feeling online as well. Uh, Matt is attending the 224th General Assembly for the Presbyterian Church in Baltimore, but according to his Facebook page, Baltimore looks a lot like his basement. So I have a feeling I know what he's up to uh, this, this morning, and again, I welcome all of you here today. And I give a shout out too to my colleague, thanking him for all the efforts that he has given in helping me be able to create this worship service and be present live with all of you today. So thank you again, my brother in Christ, Pastor Matt Sauer. Um, I just want to remind you that you can start sending in your prayer requests on the chat box. Um, I have my lovely daughter here with me today, and she's going to jot down your prayer requests. And also to prepare already some elements for the time of Holy Communion uh, to bring forward for yourself um, some form of the bread and some form of the cup. And then we will share that together later in the worship service. And I'm also just going to give you a heads up about the scripture today. It is a beautiful scripture passage. Um, by King Solomon out of 1 Kings 8. And I mention it because it's one of the longest scripture passages um, I've ever <laughs> um, typed out and read, but it is, uh, it's just going to be really beautiful as you absorb it uh, into your hearts this morning. So without further ado, I'm going to do a couple technical things here and move us forward in worship. And again, thank you for being here with us this morning. Okay, friends, let us begin our time of worship.
Oh God, as we gather for worship, we ask that this day be beautiful, surrounded by the blossoms of your love. In this time of worship, we ask that you open our eyes to beauty, tune our ears to harmony. The fragrance of your love is permeating in every moment. The touch of your hand is guiding all we do. Together we want to taste with delight the joy of your presence here with us today. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, you made us to be neighbors, members of one family, blessed with great diversity. You created us to be helpers and friends to one another, entrusting to us your justice and your joy. Yet we have denied justice and joy to many, creating worlds of poverty, pain, lost opportunities, and absence of hope. In so many ways, we break each other's hearts. Still, you do not reject us. We ask your forgiveness and pray to be transformed. Thank you for answering our prayer. Amen. Beloved in God, hear the good news that is ours. By the redemptive, unconditional, an extraordinary love of Christ, we are forgiven. We are forgiven. Hallelujah.
please join me in your hearts for our prayer of illumination in preparing to hear God's word. Oh God, we are still now calmed in your spirit and listening to your word. As the spirit of scripture comes upon us, we are prepared to make the changes within that continue to bring us closer to you, growing us into the most glorious persons you have created us to be. Amen. In hearing our story today, we read from 1 Kings chapter 8, 33 through 53, from the Bible translation called The Message. When your people Israel are beaten by an enemy because they've sinned against you, but then turn to you and acknowledge your rule in prayers, desperate and devout in this temple, listen from your home in heaven, forgive the sin of your people Israel, return them to the land you gave their ancestors. When the skies shrivel up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, but then they pray at this place, acknowledging your rule and quitting their sins because you have scourged them. Listen from your home in heaven. Forgive the sins of your servants, your people Israel. Then start over with them. Train them to live right and well. Send rain on the land you gave your people as an inheritance. When disasters strike, famine or catastrophe, crop failure or disease, locusts or beetle, or when an enemy attacks their defenses, calamity of any sort, any prayer that's prayed from anyone at all among your people Israel, hearts penetrated by the disaster, hands and arms thrown out to this temple for help, listen from your home in heaven. Forgive and go to work on us. Give what each deserves, for you know each life from the inside. You are the only one with such inside knowledge, so that they'll live before you in lifelong reverent and believing obedience on this land you gave our ancestors. Listen from your home in heaven. Honor the prayers of the foreigners so that people all over the world will know who you are and what you're like and will live in reverent obedience before you, just as your own people Israel do, so they'll know that you personally make this temple that I've built what it is. When your people go to war against their enemies at the time and place you send them, and they pray to God toward the city you chose and this temple I've built to honor your name, Listen from heaven to what they pray and ask for and do what's right for them. When they sin against you, and they certainly will, there's no one without sin. And in anger, you turn them over to the enemy and they are taken captive to the enemy's land, whether far or near, but repent in the country of their captivity and pray with changed hearts in their exile, we've sinned, we've done wrong, we've been most wicked, and turn back to you heart and soul in the land of the enemy who conquered them, and pray to you toward their homeland, the land you gave their ancestors, toward the city you chose, and this temple I have built to the honor of your name, Listen from your home in heaven to their prayers, desperate and devout, and do what is best for them. Forgive your people who have sinned against you. Forgive their gross rebellions and move their captors to treat them with compassion. They are, after all, your people and your precious inheritance, whom you rescued from the heart of that iron-smelting furnace Egypt. Oh, be alert and attentive to the needy prayers of me, your servant, and your dear people Israel. Listen every time they cry out to you. You handpick them from all the peoples on earth 
to be your very own people, as you announced through your servant Moses, when you, O God, in your masterful rule, delivered our ancestors from Egypt. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, with such a beautiful scripture passage that you just heard, read, I thought there was no other place to come and share the message with you today about that scripture passage than in the context of this uh, beautiful environment, which, ha which happens to be in my backyard. So hear the passion that Solomon, the king at the time, carried with this prayer. And hold that in your heart as we move through this scripture passage and see how this could be helpful and apply to our lives uh, today in a time of pandemic due to COVID-19. Again, we heard him praying this prayer. And what makes it remarkable is because of the passion that Solomon brought to this prayer. It is filled with such hope. And because what's going on is he's praying this at the dedication of the temple. And that alone brings him, brings the Israelites a sense of great, great hope. Because the temple now is going to be the epicenter of Israel's life and faith. And where their prayers will be heard prayers now spoken in this temple are going to get a resolution. So think about what you heard Solomon pray. He prayed in trust. But what we didn't hear is how he didn't have an attachment to the outcome of his prayer. He had no attachment to an answer as of yet. Really, how many of us can say that when we find ourselves in prayer? I confess to you right now that I've prayed more in my life in doubt and in fear and prayed primarily to want to get an immediate outcome. Like basically, really all my prayers oftentimes have done is just telling God what to do rather than being in the relationship with God, that relationship that God desires me to be in with God. And we can hear in Solomon's prayer how his heart feels assured of God's commitment to hear him, to act, and to forgive all without doubt. Solomon actually expects God, expects God to hear and act and forgive because Solomon merely needs to look back in history and see the evidence of renewal that God had given again and again and again. And it's on that evidence that Solomon is standing in this prayer. He simply needs to look to Moses. He simply needs to look to his own father, King David, and even to Solomon's own experiences that he's had with God to remind himself and his people that God's steadfast fidelity, the marriage of their relationship is there, regardless of the conduct of, well, we saw, you know, King David or the conduct of Solomon or the conduct of any of the people of Israel. Had we read the chapter before chapter eight today, we would see where God actually appeared to Solomon and promises to him that all his prayers will be answered. And in that chapter, he gives the key to Solomon, which is maybe why Solomon is praying so confidently today. The key that God gives Solomon in chapter seven is to pray your prayers 
with a heart of humility. He calls the people to come before God humble. That's the key. He literally gives the people the answer as to how it is you go to God and ask for prayer. So God tells this to Solomon in chapter seven, not to give Solomon basically a quid pro quo. That's not what it's about, but it's to tell Solomon, not if you pray like this, but Solomon, when you, when your people pray like this with a humble heart, that's when my ears can hear. Humility, friends, humbling yourself, humbling myself, Solomon, humbling the Israelites means for us basically to stop faking that somehow we have the power, that somehow we are God and to let God's self, God's omnipotence, to love you back. So basically we're called with the answer to pray with humility, to be humble. That is the answer as to how we can get out of God's way, to get out of God's way. Kind of reminds me of the scene in The Wizard of Oz where the little dog Toto goes and takes the curtain in, in that, uh, that arena where the big and powerful Oz is up on the screen and little Toto runs up to that curtain and bites it and drags it away and ends up revealing not a great and powerful Oz that you see on the screen, but a humble and frightened old man who's behind the curtain living with fears and faking his way to greatness, which wasn't great at all, was it? Friends, this is our call. It's to step off the stage of pride and self-aggrandizement and reconnect with our, with your true self, reconnect with our creator, and let God's power move in and through us. That's how we're given, literally given, the eyesight to recognize then that our prayers have been answered. Friends, let's be clear. There's always going to be problems. There's always going to be the poor, as Jesus said. There's always going to be disasters and pestilence as we've read about for thousands of years. We're on the planet for God's sake, right? We're not in heaven. We're basically separated from our source by the gravity and the like being on this physical planet. But, but, but the message of Jesus Christ is that the gap between heaven and earth has been closed in love. Love itself came to us and it built a bridge, so to speak. So we can now have access basically to get on the love train and go back and forth or basically stay in love. Here on earth, we have no choice but to humble ourselves, to buy a ticket, and to ask God to help us amidst the disasters in our lives, both big and small, so that we can endure them. That's what we're calling upon God for, to be able to endure them. And the more we are with love in our endurance, the more our fears and egos are quelled and the more love rises to the surface for a divine solution to be experienced. How on earth could we as believers, how on earth 
could we not have hope? If and when we're in a relationship with God, how could we not have hope? The evidence is such throughout history. It's literally impossible to not have hope. If that's how we are feeling at any given time, we clearly know we are not in an alignment with God's self, with love. So pray your prayers, friends, in faith. Pray your prayers in a readiness for them to be answered because they are heard. Wow. Talk about being in the present moment. Remember when Jesus talked about the lilies of the field and all that? Well, Solomon, too, in praying this prayer, Solomon is in the present moment. No wonder Solomon became so great. He was able to stay connected to the present moment only. And friends, it's the only moment that ever exists. He knew how to stay present in faith and trust. And the key is to stay in that moment, in that mode all the time. And of course, we're not going to do it, but we can get back on, again, the love train the moment we recognize that we're off. So in closing, friends, let's pray Solomon's prayer together with a passion, with a trust. Let's pray this prayer together with an insurance of past evidence that God, in fact, hears us. And let's pray this in a humble desperation of our need for love to transform our disasters and then lead us into the next renewal where we will pray again and again yet for another and for another and for another divine solution to our ongoing issues and problems in our lives. The job is to stay in the relationship with God. So join me now as you hear Solomon's prayer written now for us in a time of COVID-19. Let us pray. God, when your people, your humanity are beaten by a viral enemy, listen from your home in heaven and forgive our disrespect for one another. Help us to use this virus not as the worst thing that has happened, but instead use it as a blessing for the ways that we have drawn closer to you and served one another in love. God, start over with us. Train us to live right and well. Send a cure that will wash the coronavirus away like rain on the planet. Forgive and go to work on us, bringing us back to you, knowing what each of us needs to let go of fear and grow in love. Oh God, when we go to war on one another because of our different beliefs, our obsession with power, or the color of our skin or culture, grossly rebelling from your love. Listen from your heart and forgive us, for we are all your children. Seep into our hearts and minds so as to have us repent and apologize to one another, both individually and collectively, so the soul of our land looks like love. Oh, be alert and attentive to the needy prayers of me, your servant, and your dear people. Listen every time they cry out to you. You handpick them from all other creations on the earth to be your very own children, as you announced through your servant, Jesus Christ, when you, O oh God, in your masterful rule, delivered all of humanity from sin. We thank you for hearing our prayer. Amen.
friends, we want to give a shout out of appreciation to mother daughter vocal team, Julie and Kayla Koenig and thank them for participating in our worship service this day. At this time, I'm um, re-inviting you to begin centering yourselves for a time of prayer to please send in any, I'll call it last minute prayer requests and to have your communion elements um, available to you as we move into a time of prayer and communion. First, I'd like to remind you of our, just a second here, <laughs> of our hearts and our offerings. You know, we have a generous God. And we too are called to be generous back to God. And we can do that, of course, in our offerings for the Manitowoc Cooperative Ministry, which is, again, Peace United Church of Christ and First Presbyterian Church. And you can continue to mail in your offerings. We are truly appreciative of that. And or it's an invitation to perhaps um, begin giving online. I've mentioned before that this was something that um, I've done and I've really, really felt the heart of being able to give online. So that's been great. If you need a reminder here, our addresses of the two congregations are here for you. And again, thank you for your generosity. Uh, Pastor Matt and I and our leadership have really been able to do some wonderful things because of the way you all have been giving. So again, let us center ourselves for a time of prayer as we move into our table of love this day. Loving God, you know we are present among you this morning in a time of pandemic, also in a time of great tumultuousness between your children and cultures, colors of skin and orientation, and it has been ongoing. And as we heard prayed in Solomon's prayer this day, and then re-prayed for our time in this pandemic and tumultuousness, we already trust that you have heard and answered our prayers. And we seek to move out of the way to let you love us. We lift up today prayer request from Laura with a praise report for young Josh who received a double lung transplant and we had given praises for last week and we continue to give thanks for young Josh is planning and preparing to return home. May your Holy Spirit continue to be with him that his body grows in strength and harmony and healing that he in fact can continue to grow strong to become a good and faithful servant to you. We lift up prayers this day from the hearts and voice of our sister in Christ, Darla, prayers for her son and our brother in Christ, Brent, who was seriously injured this week and facing surgery. Gracious God, may Brent open up his heart and his mind to your healing love that is already present. And may doctors and nurses and caretakers surround him as his body is repaired and grows in recovery and renewal and that he see your great love for him and that he continue to be and grow stronger in being a good and faithful servant to you. Again, we pray for our brothers and sisters 
who are black, indigenous, people of all color, who are simply weary of white central culture, telling them how to feel and act, set our pride aside, oh God, so that all people may rise up in humility and love and that we can simply be the people that you have created us to be. And bless those that surround these individuals, bless those that are feeling frustrated given this pandemic, given the tumultuousness of riots and judgments of others that it's permeated anger in our world. Quell us, quell our egos, sit them down again that love may rise up. We ask for prayers for our sister in Christ, Bernice Lambries, who is now finding her home away from home in a new setting at Tender Hearts. We're grateful for the love and support and care that her amazing family has given her throughout her life. And now as she finds herself in a new space, may it be your Holy Spirit moving through each and every one of them that love her and now through caretakers as well, that helps her to sense that you are present with her always. We thank you for hearing our prayers. And prayers, oh God, I thank you, my colleague, Matt, for lifting up prayers for my knee replacement surgery on Wednesday. I thank you for an already successful surgery. I thank you for my family that loves and supports me and for all of the members in the MCM that have extended their love and prayers and will do so ongoing. Uh, may doctors' hands and nurses' hands be blessed again by the guidance of your Holy Spirit, that it may be a success so I can continue to serve you as a good and faithful servant as well. As we move into our holiday this upcoming week, oh God, sometimes our hearts feel like there is not much to celebrate, and yet we also know that there's more love in the world because you exist then there ever will be fear or anger or hardship, that you are bigger than all of these things. And so therefore, may the bigness of your love and your hearts, may it hover and permeate through our elected officials that lead this nation. May it hover and permeate through our law enforcement that seek to keep this nation safe and may it permeate and hover through all civil servants and clergy alike that together we take an ethical responsibility in showing one another what it is that love looks like. We thank you for hearing all of our prayers today and we now enjoy that you hear us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father and Mother in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are now yours, now and forever. Amen. On the night in which our Lord was arrested, he took bread, he lifted it up to heaven, and he gave thanks to God for the food of the earth. And then he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat all of you. Take and eat all of you. This is my body, my love.
given for you. After supper, the Lord again took a cup, lifted it up to heaven and gave thanks to God for the fruit of the earth. He then poured it out and gave it to his disciples saying, take and drink all of you. Take and drink all of you. This is my blood, my love shed for you. Siblings in Christ, this is the covenant of God that sins are forgiven. Eternal life can be yours and love abounds. Siblings, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is ready. All is blessed. Eat and drink for this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Holy God, majestic is your name. Creation sings of your glory. And we do too. We give you thanks for this holy meal that we have touched and we have tasted. May it empower us and transform us, drawing us closer and closer to you. Amen. Friends, this week, as always, we have our community dinners on Wednesday evening, starting at five o'clock. It continues to be a takeout. Thank you for whatever ways it is that you are supporting our community dinners on Wednesday night, uh, whether it be donations monetarily or your social distancing, volunteering, we are super grateful for how you contribute to this ongoing ministry despite the pandemic. We also would like to invite you to continue to be inspired with our daily devotions on YouTube and Facebook each day. Pastor Matt and I really enjoy bringing you these uh, few minute meditations. And a note that the Monday noon Bible study uh, this week and next week is canceled. So we will resume after two Mondays after the holiday weekend. Um, Bible study will resume. And then to just remember to continue to like us on Facebook, continue to be inspiring. We try hard to uh, inspire you in your spiritual journey on Facebook, on the MCM United Facebook, or on YouTube with Manitowoc Cooperative Ministry. And remember, too, that on Sunday mornings, we do gather for fellowship at 930 before our worship service begins at 10 o'clock. And the details of connecting to that are in the bulletin, which you receive via email or snail mail, so to speak. And most importantly, we want you to know that we are here for you. Whether you call the church office, you're able to leave a message for any one of us specifically, just follow the prompts, or you call our personal cell phones. We work closely together to make sure that if there is something on your heart and mind uh, that is hurting you or something that is of a great joy concern, we really would like to share it with our family in faith. So again, know that we are here for you. And now, before I visually say goodbye to you after our song, I ask that you center your hearts for the benediction. And join me in affirming God's love for you. Remembering as you stay in your social distancing space to stay loving God so much that you love nothing else too much. 
and to stay in your social distancing space, trusting God so much that you need not fear anything else at all. Amen. Friends, thank you for bearing with my less than savvy technical skills today as we worship. Um, I'm giving myself a total forgiveness pass because it's not about any of those things, is it? It is about God, it is about love, and it is about you and your relationship with God. And on that note, I wish you an absolutely beautiful week. And remember to live to love. Take great care and we'll see you next time. Bye.